Hi, everybody. Welcome to Women Empowered Across the World podcast, and this is episode two. Um, we are thrilled to have you, and we have some amazing women today uh, on this episode, and we have an amazing guest host. I'm going to call her a guest host because she is a host uh, in our podcast, but she is our guest today, and we're going to find out all about Megan today. Um, we are thrilled um, to get to know Megan in a way different way than probably most of us do know. Uh, so Megan, come and share your story, and let's inspire Minnie. Thank you very much, Carol. Hi, everyone, and hello to everyone listening in. So my story starts, I grew up in a little, a beautiful little town in in Cape Town, South Africa, called Ocean View. And I promise you, it is a cauldron of creative and really soulful people. Um, it's something that I've always felt growing up there. But I think with hindsight and with, with maturity, you actually realize exactly what you had when you were there. So I, I no longer live in the, the area, but my family, uh, part of my family still lives there. Um, for me, it was a life or childhood of oceans and mountains and, you know, just playing outside. Mm. And it was really, in, in, in one way, really idyllic because it was just freedom. It was just running around and doing, doing your thing. Unfortunately, we also had the element of gangsterism and drugs that was quite a heavy, heavy influence at the time. So essentially, you had those two things calling kids and you had music, sports, and academia, on the other hand, right? And my parents were very big on education. So my mom was studying as a teacher at some point during our childhood. And my dad is still one of the most educated people, if I can put it in that way, that I know. He's not educated in a formal way, but he reads everything. And you can speak to him and have a conversation about just about anything. So... I love conversations with my dad, and he's he's close to 80 years old now. Still love having those conversations with him. But I remember the days growing up where reading and books and doing crossword puzzles and all of those kinds of things were just a daily thing in my world. Unfortunately, we also had an element of domestic abuse happening when I was growing up. And so there was always this conflict going on, right? It's me doing what I want to do and living a really good childhood out in the mountains, out in the ocean, and then you have that element at home. So that obviously also has had a huge influence on how I do things and where I am today. But I, I think for me, the experience has been a really powerful one in the sense that it just fortified me because my mom is a woman of absolute strength and dignity, and she's a really strong anchor to to me in my life and my siblings as well I'm one of three so that was my childhood and because I grew up in this nature and we camped often and my dad was an angler and a diver and we were just always outdoors when I left school I was looking to do something that was really outdoors and nature orientated environmentally friendly and all of that and I started my formal career as a marine research assistant. And so I, for almost a decade, I worked at sea on the research vessels and I just absolutely loved it. It was totally adventure, totally adventure. And if, if I could go back to that life today, I absolutely would. It really was the dream way to live. And being young, single, I, I think I was 18 when I started in that career. It was the best thing ever. You got to travel, you saw things nobody got to see. And it was just really a good start to a career. However, things took a really good swing after that. I, I left that uh, space and I went to the, into the corporate world and I found the world of sales. And immediately I went into a very tech heavy industry and that is laboratory equipment and instrumentation and obviously being in sales in that space. Um, it was a very male dominated industry, right? The heavy duty tech. And I ended up being in the sales space, in the sales marketing space, um, in that career. And one theme that I've picked up after all of these years, all the different jobs that I've had throughout my career, I always found the most creative elements in those spaces. So think heavy duty tech, think 
um, your mining industry think, um, earth moving, all of those things. I was involved with those industries, but at home I was crafting, I was making candles, I was doing all the events and I was doing expos for, for my workplaces. So I always found that creative outlet, right? And that's where I realized that there's this very heavy split in me between the tech and creative. And so that opened my eyes and my career continued in the very, very heavy um, tech industry. And then I had my daughter about almost 16 years ago. And while I was on maternity leave, one of my hobbies, which was candle making, turned into my first business. And that was pure accident. So uh, people started seeing the candles I was making and just went, right, can I order one or two of those? And so on. And the next thing I knew, I was in business, right? And that was my, my very first business. That went on for about three years. Unfortunately, life happened, circumstances changed, and I went back into corporate um, for a few years after that. But again, you know, once you've got that experience of entrepreneurship, corporate is just like a cage, right? But also, I just, I kept feeling like a square pig in a round hole, and I couldn't figure out what it is. With hindsight, I now know what it was. It was just that I was so focused on relationship building as a person. And, you know, in sales, there's a target. And if my client said to me, I've got that order for you, I just need it signed off, but it's not going to happen for month end, I would go, perfect, thank you, I'll pick it up next week and smile, Right. And my managers would lose their minds because we need those sales targets to be fulfilled, right? So there was always that conflict going on. And in 2020, I, I was retrenched from the industry due to, to COVID. And for me, it was an absolute blessing because my husband, wonderful support that I've had for 25 years in my life. My husband said to me, you've been wanting to start your own business again for so long. Why don't you just take this opportunity? Everything in the sales world, all just shutting down. Just go for it. So I spent a few months building my business, studying online, and I stepped into copywriting and content creation. Obviously, uh, the fact that literacy, reading, all of those research, all of those things were a huge part of my life previously. It just made sense to me. And in the four years that my business has been running, I've gone through copywriting, content creation, some UX design elements, proofreading, editing. So all of those things is where I was playing for the first two years. I knew, however, when I wrote my, my business plan in 2020, that the ultimate goal was to get to a point where I start a youth academy. Um, and for me, it was first and foremost about literacy, because in my world, literacy underpins everything. You know, if you can't read, you can't write, you can't comprehend anything. How far can you really get? So for me, that was always the goal. But according to my first business plan, that was supposed to start in 2030. And then I met Jackie a few years ago and everything just got <laughs> spun on its head, right? So um, I've been working as uh, an, an English literature, literature tutor for the last two years in my local community, online and in person. I've also stepped into the creative works consultation space because I just needed that outlet in, in my business. I do purpose and passion coaching. As I mentioned, global literacy. I call myself an advocate for global literacy because Jackie's sitting in the US, I'm sitting in South Africa and I've been building very strong relationships in this business in order to welcome the world into my academy space. And that is where I am and of course, Last but not least, I'm now a podcaster too. So it's all just, you know, everything flows and you find one thing and an opportunity falls into your lap. And the one thing this last four years in this business has taught me is if anybody throws an opportunity at you, you catch it and you go, I'll figure it out, right? I'll figure it out. I'll do it. Let's let's go. So yeah, that's pretty much me. It's just my business was built so that I can express myself and I encourage people to just be themselves, figure out who they are. And I love working with kids and with youth in this space. But also the purpose and passion coaching came into my picture because I realized how many entrepreneurs need that. Just figuring out who they are so that they can align with the business that they are building, right? So that is me in a nutshell. That's where I am today. And may, may I also not forget to mention that I'm a mom, a wife, and 
I've got a very, very supportive, close-knit family. So thank you. Wow. <laughs> So oh, wonderful, Megan, to know a little more about you. you Thank you, Carol. That was fun. Ooh, that was inspiring, really inspiring. <laughs> I love being able to hear how our lives, you know, all the different things in our lives take us places. Yeah. They take us to the next place and to the next place. And oh, my goodness. And now they've taken you to me. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Absolutely. So. So guys, would you ha do you have some questions for Megan that you have curiosity about or you just want to ask? Anybody? I have a question. So I'm going to, I'll start it out. Um, so my question is this, you know, you said that you did a lot of traveling when you were doing the marine biology. Uh, what was like your favorite place that you visited that you, the and your favorite experience in it? I think... Well, I, I flew a lot locally, but the best place I found myself was smack bang in the middle of the ocean. You know, they, I don't know how many people can appreciate the fact that you wake up for days on end in the middle of total tranquility. There is no better feeling than that. And I think that's one of the elements that I miss the most is just waking up with that gentle lapping of the water on the side of the vessel that you're on, the gentle rocking. Other times we went to sleep in force for storms and we had very lucky escapes while I was out there, had quite a few adventures. But I think the part I miss the most, the place I love visiting the most is that quiet place in the middle of the ocean where you don't see day, you don't see land for days. Beautiful. It's a special kind of peace. It's a special yeah. kind of peace. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I've done a lot yes. of sailing and it is so beautiful looking up and seeing the stars and the moon so vividly because there's nothing else around, no other lights, no other anything to interfere absolutely. with that visual. Oh, nothing like it. Absolutely. Beautiful. Love it. All right. Anybody else have a question? Yeah, Jackie. I remember, Megan, you were telling me that you were working with, I don't know if it was hydroponics or which, which clarify that with me, please. And um, I would like to know a little bit more about that. Oh, Jackie. So aside from the, the fun that's happening in my life right now in terms of this podcast and meeting all of you and getting to do to have this experience with you, another thing that's very recently stepped into my space, and this is through another collab I have going in the literacy space. Uh, I was introduced to someone through one of my, my business partners there. And the person I met just we clicked. Within an hour, we were brainstorming and doing things and turning one another's businesses upside down. And we ended up with this business model that made so much sense in my business uh, currently, as well as his. So he does um, something called Mindful Living. And he's about to start full-time working in that space where he is building lifestyle pods of sustainability. And this is his big dream in his life. And how that attached and made sense to me was we know that a hungry child cannot learn, right? And for me, I'm in, an, in, in a community at the moment, and as I mentioned, Ocean View, where I come from, um, those communities need the support of people that can actually inspire them, but also just bring them, bring the outside world to them, if you will, because they are underserved. And what made sense for me was the fact that if we create a loop of feeding and not starting a soup kitchen and just feeding them consistently, but creating a loop where they could learn how to feed themselves and earn an income and build up them, their, their family homes and in turn the community and in turn then we teach them on the program, right? That made sense. So we took Maslow's hierarchy and we just turned my business upside down within the space of an hour. And three of us are actively working on that project. We're going to be using hydro hydroponics and um, a few other interesting terminologies. I feel like I'm in engineering school at the moment because I'm doing quite a lot of research. But we are starting a project where hydroponics and maybe aquaponics will be featuring greatly. And it is all with the end goal of uplifting, creating resilience and 
um, sustainability within underserved communities. But the end goal is to make sure that we get our literacy across, that we get our financial savvy across, and everything else that people need as a basic life skill. And at the end of it, they'll know how to grow their own fruits and veggies and everything. So it's very recent, but we are working at it like you don't want to know. So very exciting. <laughs> Beautiful. And and I entered, I encourage Christy Abbott to talk with her because I told her about the hydroponics. She says, well, there's an even better way. I need I said, okay. I don't know if you two were on yesterday. I didn't yes. get to Carol's session, but but the yeah, two of them um may be able to Im Absolutely. impact more with what they know. Uh, Absolutely. Sure. Thank you, Megan. Yeah, I'll make sure that you two get connected for sure. Yeah. We, we actually did chat yesterday, so we will be um, having a chat. And then also Mike from, from Uganda reached out for me, uh, reached out to me yesterday. So we've been chatting as well. So I will be bringing our hydroponics project. We call it Oasis for the moment. We'll be bringing it into your space, yes, and, and seeing how we can pull things together. Wonderful, Perfect. Megan. Wonderful. Okay, who else would? Oh, uh, Alina has a question for you. Hey. Yes, Megan, because you mentioned the, your your dad, that yes. he impacted just like your childhood. And uh, I wonder, have you had uh, any other uh, key mentors that uh, influencing your path? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Or role models. Oh, absolutely. Um, I've had many wonderful people in my world. Um, one of them. It's my standard five, my grade seven teacher. Um, and I still, I'm like Jackie. I don't lose friends. I think um, Carol also mentioned last week. So I'm friends with a lot of my primary school friends, like as in grade one friends, um, grade five. And we have a reunion group. We just had our city of reunion a couple of years ago. So we're very much still in contact. And the one thing that we always discuss when we get together is our grade seven teacher, our standard five teacher. She was the most inspirational, nurturing, kindest person. And her name is Mrs. Frost. And we just still, 30 odd years later, keep speaking about this woman. So she was definitely uh, another one of the early ones. And then throughout my different um, careers that, that I've pursued, and I've had a few really eclectic ones thrown into the mix, but I've had some wonderful technical mentors and people that just reinforced the fact that my brain works differently. So I'm completely, I'm completely at ease with the fact that I'm probably ADD and I love calling it neurospicy though. But it's because I know that my work, my, my brain just works differently. And so people that just encourage me to be me and do things the way I, I've had many of those people in my world for sure. Thanks for that question, Thank Alina. you. Thank you. It was interesting. Anybody else Thank have you. a question? Yeah. Yes, Renata. Muted. You're muted. There you go. Yeah. Thank you, Megan. So inspiring to hear you. So glad to be here. And my question is, um, as a coach, so what are your vision for the next three, five years? So I'm sure you have a lot of things in mind. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Not a great question. So I think that the one thing that really inspired me to formalize the coaching in my space is a program called Ignite. And I think I mentioned it on one of our, our previous um, episodes, the very first um, episode that we aired here. And it's a coaching space for entrepreneurs, but it's fledgling and startups. And it's run through one of the communities that I've been a part of for a very long time. And that takes an, an, a fledgling entrepreneur from a zero to up and running business within 10 weeks. So we, we actually have our graduation ceremony tomorrow for our second group. And it's year two of this project where nine of us are coaching um, these students through that 10 week program. And for me, all I want in my coaching space for the next 10 years, 20 years, as, well, as long as I do this, is to know that if I've taken each person that's run through my hands, and just showing them one core element of what they bring to this world. Um, 
that is the big thing. At the moment, I'm still very much putting the coaching out there because I think some of you may know I, I took a break from my business earlier, late last year, early this year um, with a cancer diagnosis. And since I've stepped back, that was something that was coming through for me very strongly while I was taking time away from the business. And so I started just pulling things together in that space. But I think for me, it's just about formalizing it, making sure that the impact that I want to create in that space, especially in terms of the passion and the purpose, reinforcing that, but also allowing people to really know that everybody comes to us with everything they need. We just need to help them find it and pull the pieces together. So that is that is my dream for the next five to 10 years in the business is just to solidify it and to make sure that every person gets everything we have that we can give them out of our program, out of the coaching space. Wow, wonderful. Okay, Maria has a question for you. Hi, Maria. Uh, hi, Megan. I so enjoyed listening to you. Thank you so much for sharing the question. It's not really a question. It's more an acknowledgement because you mentioned on both sides, you had this happening and that happening and the contrast. Yes. And I thought it would be interesting for our, for our listeners as well to hear how you, you, you navigated that because from this point in your life, you can look back and say it was like this and like that. But yes. what was your... What was your sort of overriding um, sort of goal or, or even what was keeping you going, you know, through through the tough times? Because I think we all have tough times and try and balance, you know, sometimes. I'd love to hear how you, you know, kind of coped with that, if, if that's okay. Awesome. Oh, it's perfect. Thank you, Maria. That's, that's a really great question. So the one thing that's always been with me and I have no idea – I'll say this as, as a human, I have no idea when I realized this thing was there. But that sparked to always, so when, when I was growing up and, you know, the domestic violence was going on and all of these things and um, a couple of incidences where I lost a job along the way and my husband had a stroke when my daughter was three years old. So there were lots of challenges going on. But there was always this thing that just said to me, there's something better out there. There, it's it's waiting for you, right? And um, I'm I'm spiritual. I am not particularly re religious. I'm spiritual, and I do believe in divine intervention, and I do believe in um, synchronicity. That when you are at peace with yourself and content with yourself, and you have found yourself, I believe that every opportunity comes your way. So I've always had this, this core belief happening and staying with me. And I think one of the big things, Maria, that I'd like to mention here is the reading. I don't think if I had that influence of books and reading and the escapism that it offered me as a child, I don't think my life would have, my life path would have been what it is today or what it's been. And so for me, that's a very important part of what I want to do with the, the kids in the literacy space is there's opportunity in reading, there is joy in reading, there's adventure in reading, but I do know that a lot of our kids, especially in South Africa, need that escape from reality just to reboot themselves every so often. And so for me, that was a really important part of it, and I'd like to keep passing that on. But then also my, my my closest friends, my family, I've got the most amazing people around me. So I've always had the friends, the family, and a very close network of entrepreneurs along the way. So I, I'm happy go. Beautiful. Okay, Renata has another question for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Megan, um, uh, I get curious here because you mentioned that you were in, in a cancer treatment. Yes. Yes. And okay. I um so so today we are living, we can say like a silence a pandemic of cancer around the world that unfortunately yeah. we don't talk enough about this issue. Right. And I, I bet there's a lot of people listen to us that are going to are facing the same yes. uh, thing. 
So what are the lessons learned from this experience you had, if you can share with us? Wow. Renato, thank you. I think the, the, the cancer diagnosis and the journey that I've been on uh, with the cancer has been such a fortifying journey for me. It's been such a strengthening journey because, you know, when you hear the word cancer and your mind just goes, everything goes, right? And because, again, that, that element of war, war just hanging in there kicked in immediately for me. And I came home. I, I was at my appointment on my own. And so I came home and I told my husband and I was in total tears. And my husband just said to me, Whatever comes, we've got it. And that, that's pretty much been his standard response. So between him, my family, and, and the closest friends that we told immediately, I, I've got a 15-year-old daughter. So for me, I said to him, the one thing that I needed to do for myself was to really take time to process before I speak to her about it. Because my cancer was in a very early stage and the prognosis was very good. But I know how people react. And imagine a 15-year-old child being told, ah. your mom's got cancer, right? So I had to take a few days out to process and just be okay with it myself in order to share with her. But the one thing that I want to tell anyone going through this journey, trust yourself. Do things in the way that you feel it should be done because Yes, I listened to my doctors. Yes, I took advice. Uh, I had a fantastic surgeon that came to me on the morning of my first procedure. I had two procedures earlier this year. She said to me, I'm not happy with what we're going to do. Can we change the procedure for today? And this was at 5 a.m. on the morning of my procedure. And I just intuitively, something kicked in and I went, I'm with you. And it could it, it's probably something that saved my life in that moment, even though the diagnosis was so early. So for me, I do believe that when you listen to that instinct and you actually just, you take a moment just to, to ground yourself in that, in that experience, you will be guided through it. And I, I've just had the most amazing support, but also take the time. I mean, I would just sit there and have a moment every now and again and, you know, just sit there and go, wow. Is this really happening? And I'd had to have to talk myself through things, right? But friends, family, peers, everybody was just messaging me and just going, thinking of you today. Are you okay? And I would go back. But for me, at the end of it, I got I got a meme somewhere during the, the treatment process that I went through. And it says, maybe you were given this journey or given this Maybe we're given this mountain to climb so you can show others that it can be done, mm. right? And for me, that was just, that was super special to, to, to discover during that time. So I think it's about trusting the gut, mm. weighing things, up, really, really making space to think about things because there's a part of my treatment that I'm fighting with my doctors about at the moment where they want to put me on hormone blocking medication for five years. And with the, the list of side effects, it just doesn't make sense to me. Tell me, make it logical, and I'm happy to do it. But at the moment, it's not logical. So I, I've refused to use the medication. So, of course, that's not, not a happy moment for, for, for the team that's treating me. But um, my, my compromises on, on that is a better lifestyle, um, you know, better eating, health and wellness as a priority. And so... That's where we are today. And you know what? If it works out, great. If it doesn't, I'll be healthier going forward for as long as I'm around anyway. So for me, it's it's a win-win. And my, my family and I are most comfortable with that route. And that's that. So plug into to you is my advice. Beautiful, Megan. Megan, we have Dr. Kara who has a question yeah. for you. Yes. Megan, thank you so much for sharing such an inspiring story with us ladies today. It's so empowering to be a part of this team. My question for you is, you mentioned that you had a podcast. I was wondering what topics you covered and what inspired you to add that to your business. So this is the podcast, Dr. Carter. This is the opportunity. And believe it or not, I've got, I've got an accountability partner and we've been together for over a year now. 
close to two years. And for the last few months, just when just before I was diagnosed in October, we were going to start putting this podcast together. And then I stepped out of my business for a while. And we've been reminding each other every month that we need to get back to the podcast conversation and, you know, move with that. And then things happened. I was introduced to Carol, just what, Carol, a month ago, a month or two ago, not even, right? And the next thing, Carol put this on the table and I went, yes, let's do it, right? And I just thought, I'm going in that direction anyway. And um, I've already got a few people that I'm planning to be within the podcast space. It's just not happened yet. Carol stepped in. I went, yes, and it happened. So here we are. And my my other podcast will be about content creative um, con- content creativity in a woman from a woman's perspective because both of us on the in the content creation space although she's more um, my accountability is more focused on the media space um, and myself in communications in general we just we just have really good conversations and that's what we want to bring across in that podcast as entrepreneurs so that will be the focus for the the next one really thanks that's God. beautiful thank you so much for sharing that Megan and thank you all for letting me be a part of this conversation absolutely thank you guys for Megan thank you for such an inspiring story um guys this is what this platform is all about we are asking women to come on and just share their story from their heart and then have us be a part of it inside of asking questions to have them be able to share more things about themselves and just feel empowered have a voice have a place where their voice can be heard. And that's what this this po- podcast is all about. And Megan, we are thrilled to have you as a host. And Dr. Kara, I would love to have you come and be a host with us um, in our episodes, the different episodes we do. Um, you would be an absolute pleasure to have uh, be a part of the team. So I am inviting you to be a part of it right here on the podcast, okay, with everyone. Um, so guys, Um, Thank you for the amazing questions that you ask Megan. Um, And Megan, thank you for your heart and for how you just so opened it up to all of us and shared yourself. Thank you. Uh, Guys, this is our second episode. Um, It was an amazing episode. I cannot wait for our next one. Um, we will be, I will be putting this up in YouTube tonight by 7 PM and then it will go out to everyone. Please share it. Please share it. Please like, please subscribe and please comment on the episodes. Okay. Thank you everyone. Thank you so much for an, another amazing episode. When we stand in this war, there's no divide. Peace and love on every side.